I don't know why we tend to think it's like this apocalypse. If AI can assist us in creating systems that are equitable, that are profitable, and we don't need to work anymore because everything is taken care of, well, that, that sounds like paradise to me. Yeah, I think AI is the biggest thing to happen in the last 5,000 years. I mean, it really is a big deal, and I don't think we totally understand the impact that AI is gonna have just yet. We've always wanted to outsource thinking to something else, but nobody's ever really figured it out until the last few years. And now it's really here. At some point, AIs will become smarter than us in everything. And that point is really interesting. It's called the singularity, where AI essentially becomes smarter than everything that we can do. We have to start thinking about what the world looks like post-singularity, because if AI is better than us in everything, at some point you have to say, you know, are we obsolete? And I think that's what we're gonna see with AI in the next few years, is truly augmented individuals, augmented organizations that are gonna utilize an AI to become 10, 20, 50, 100 times more efficient at doing something. I think at some point we do have to actually say to ourselves what happens if we wake up one morning and we don't need to work anymore as a society? Because the premise of our society is work. It's embedded in everything that we do. We're all here today working. Imagine if that's not a thing anymore. Like, what would you do with your time? And I think some people sit here and lament that and say, oh, how terrible it would be if we only just were able to sit around and enjoy time with our friends and, and drink wine and cook great things and make amazing art and music. That doesn't sound like that bad of a thing. I don't know why we tend to think it's like this apocalypse. If AI can assist us in creating systems that are equitable and that are profitable and we don't need to work anymore because everything is taken care of, well, that, that sounds like paradise to me. People are gonna augment their lives in such a way with AI that we're gonna produce exponentially greater results that are far better, far faster than anything we've ever seen before. There's a Chinese company right now that does lending in mainland China, but the AI looks at hundreds of thousands or millions of applications, millions of payment histories, and it found these trends. And it actually found that if you charge your phone more often, if you charge your phone at your home at night, there's a higher probability you pay your bills than if you're charging your phone in multiple different locations. So it started to learn some things. And even the AI researchers are like, we're not totally sure why the AI chose those things to be the most important, but their success rate on loans is as high, if not higher than all the other local banks. So obviously it's doing something. So I think that's the great thing that AI can bring us. It can bring a very objective opinion on things. And I think on top of that, it can solve one of the biggest problems that we have as humans. We don't wanna look at the statistics. We wanna hear about the one little girl. We wanna hear about the one little boy. We always want that one little use case to, yeah, it's very warm. It allows us to align ourselves to this concept or idea. And, and that's not always a good thing. You know, we spend a lot of resources on healthcare in this country and around the world. And some of the resources that we spend on healthcare statistically don't make any sense, but we do it because we're empathetic. But if we wanna look at the system and figure out how to optimize it, what we really should be doing is looking at the data. And I know that sounds really morbid in some senses, but it could just be even things about driving. And I gave a speech a couple of years ago at a place and there were a couple of insurance executives there. And one woman said, I will never, executive, she said, I will never, ever, ever give up driving. And one of the insurance executives said, I, I believe that that's true. I believe that you think that you'll never give up driving. We have discovered that there is a time coming where the average insurance for the average American will be $150,000 a year, minimum premium to drive a car. And he's like, would you drive a car if you had to pay $150,000 a year in insurance? And she's like, absolutely not. And he said, yeah, because you are the most dangerous driver on the road. And if you wanna to continue to drive, you're just gonna to have to pay a fee that is so outrageous because you're going to be in accidents all the time and it's always gonna be your fault. If you look at our education system in this country or around the world. At some point, we actually have to say to ourselves, what if we didn't have a model at all? What if we knew nothing about educating kids? Let's start all over again. Let's maybe use AI that can process a ton of data, and let's work together to figure out what the model would look like if we throw away all that bias of the old system. And then what would come up out of that, right? A completely new model of education that isn't influenced by the biases that we had in the past. Now, the reality is we as humans are gonna have a hard time doing that because it might mean that it says we don't need teachers. It might mean that it says we don't need buildings. It might say that parents should be home with their kids for the first 10 years of their lives. We might not like what the data says, 
But the reality is the outcome is going to be significantly better underneath that new model that can support that. So many times we're building on this foundational principle that's generations and generations old, it just doesn't apply anymore. We've, we've outgrown the model. And I think it's an important thing to think about and not thinking about how do we fix it, but how do we create new models? And I think that's one of the things that AI can really do for us.